answers. These are the two I asked you to try at the end of the notes yesterday. And so these are your answers to uh, those problems that I asked you to try. Complementary, they need to add to 90. That's these two, 75 and 15, add to 90. Supplementary, they need to add to 180, so that's these two. Adjacent, they're right next to each other. Vertical angles, vertical angles are the angles that are right across from each other. So that's one and three if we draw our intersecting lines there. Uh, I talked about yesterday that we would make that X pattern. Of, I should just be able to draw the two lines. So those are the angles right across from each other. And then linear pair, I said that there were two linear pairs. So that is uh, going to be one and two. Those are a linear pair. Uh, they're right next to each other. They form a straight line. They form, uh, if I put the angles together, one and two, they actually form this straight line here. And then two and three are also a linear pair. If I put two and three together, they form this straight line here. So two angles, when I put them together, that form a line. That would be a linear pair. Uh, let's say that I have two lines that are intersecting, two lines that are crossing. And what we're going to ask is a question that we've, uh, that we ask a lot in this class is going to be, how does this work? Does this always work? Are there some times that it works and most of the time it doesn't work? Is it only true because it worked this one time? Does it work most of the time, but there are exceptions? So let's look at these two intersecting lines. So you'll notice that I have two pairs of vertical angles here. I've got the pair of red vertical angles, these two angles being right across from each other. And then I have the blue pair of vertical angles. These are both 120. And so I want to take a look at what has to be true about those angles. So what do you notice right now about those pair of red angles and those pair of blue angles? What about their measurements right now? So this is 60 and this is 60. This is 120 and this is 120. They're the same. They're exactly the same. And so in those two intersecting lines, those vertical angles, those angles right across from each other, end up being the same. Is it true? Is it just because the angles are 60? Let's find out. Because the other thing we want to keep an eye on is our linear pair. Uh, we have a linear pair right here, this 120 and this 60, because they form a straight line, this straight line down here. And so those two angles, 120 and 60, if I add those together, I get 180. And when two angles add to 180, those are called supplementary. So we're keeping an eye on two things. Number one, are the vertical angles, the angles across from each other, are they still the same? And then secondly, my linear pair, the two angles that form the straight line. Do they keep being supplementary? Do they keep adding to 180? Let's look. So you'll notice it's still 42, still both 138. They're still being the same directly across from each other. They're still the same directly across from each other. Let's drag this point around. Oh, they're still the same. 
let's make this, uh, let's make the red one big and the blue one small. Oh, they're still the same. Okay, but I bet now, uh, like now that I look, they are, probably aren't going to be the same across from each other, are they? Oh, wait, they are. Still the same. And notice, again, that I've got a 48 here and 132 here. These angles, uh, this linear pair right here, 48 and 132, still adds to 180. 88 and 92 still adds to 180. So we have two ideas that we know to be true here. And I want you to write this down next to the vocab words on the vocab pages. We have vertical angles and linear pairs, so I want you to find those two and make sure you write this down next to them. This is going to be important. We use this a lot. First off, next to linear pair, next to linear pair, I want you to write that they are supplementary or that they add to 180. So first thing you should write down is a linear pair is supplementary. They add to 180. Why do they always add to 180? Because they make a straight line, and a straight line has to measure 180. So next to your definition of linear pair, you should also write down supplementary, add to 180. And then next to vertical angles, you don't need to write all of it down. You just need to write supplementary, adds to 180. Next to vertical angles, you should write down that they're congruent or that they measure the same or that they're equal. Vertical angles, the angles across from each other are going to be congruent. So one and three are the same and two and four are the same. That's what we saw in that diagram. Uh, we're actually going to show later on why this is true, but let me give you a little preview of why that's true, just so that we can see. If you have these vertical angles, so I drew two intersecting lines up here, and let's say, let's keep the numbers easy, uh, let's say this angle is 100 degrees. So I know this angle is 100 degrees. Then I've got some linear pairs. And remember, I know the linear pair is supplementary, so it's going to add to 180. So I have a linear pair here, these two angles being a linear pair, because when I put those angles together, I'm going to have, it's going to form this straight line here. So if this is 100 to add to get 180, then that leaves this angle to have to be 80. But then I have another linear pair with this angle, because this angle here and this angle here are also a linear pair. These two angles, if I put them together, are going to make this straight line here. So exact same thing. If this angle is 100, then to make the linear pair, to complete it, we need this to be 80 so that they're supplementary. And now if you look at what I've made, I've made these two angles that are across from each other, those vertical angles, locked in to be the same. They have to be congruent. And the fact that it was 100 is arbitrary. You saw earlier, I could have chosen any measurement and it would have been locked in the same way. Right? Once I know this is 88, that means these both have to be 92. They have to be the same. That happens no matter where we are. Uh, in fact, 
uh, even if, let's say I have 90. Now they're all the same. Is it still true? Well, yes, it is. Because there we go. Because these two across from each other, they're still the same. Uh, these two that make a linear pair, or these two that make a linear pair, if I take 90 and 90 and add them together, what do I get? Well, still 180. So they still add to 180. They're still supplementary. All the angles are 90 degrees in this example, so they all, uh, they're all right angles. Anyone know what that's called? When they cross and they make right angles? We haven't talked about it yet, but you've heard the word before. It starts with a P. We'll have a whole chapter about it when we get there. But it's uh, perpendicular. Again, we'll have, we'll have a chapter that talks a, a lot more in detail about perpendicular lines, so I'm not too worried about it right now. But if they make right angles, then they're perpendicular. And it's still true that the vertical angles are congruent. It's still true that the linear pair is going to be supplementary. Two variables in one problem. This is a ripoff. I didn't sign up for this. That's a lot of variables. Now, here's what I'd suggest. If you got two variables in a problem, do not try and deal with them both at once. Uh, you can, but it's going to take you a lot longer. Deal with them one at a time. So we're just going to focus on the angles that deal with x, and then we're going to talk about the angles that deal with y. So if I'm focused just on the angles that deal with x, then I have a 4x here and a 6x minus 26 over here. So those angles are across from each other. These are the angles that are across from each other in these lines. So I know that means angles across from each other, those are vertical angles. And what we just showed is that those vertical angles, those angles right across from each other, they got to be the same. They have to be congruent. Oh, so if they're congruent, if they're the same, then I'm going to make them equal. What are the angles that I'm saying are equal? I got a 4x here and a 6x minus 26 here. Set them equal to each other. Make them the same. So set these equal to each other. As always, you should be able to. on the same side first. Once you do that, you should end up with uh, something with like 2x on one side and the 26 on the other side. So we divide. You should get 13 for x. So let's double check that these worked out the way that they should. Uh, x being 13 there. So over here, this angle, uh, 4 times x, which is 13. We got 4 times 13, that's uh, 26. Double it again is going to be 52 degrees. We're checking that the angles work out the way that they should. 52, so this angle should match it, and it should also be 52. 6 times x is 13. Minus 26. 6 times 13, that's going to be 78. Minus 26 is also 52. 
so they match. They're exactly the same, which is exactly what they said. We said they should be. There's solving for x. Now let's deal with solving for y. So we're focused on, we don't care about x anymore. We're just focused on the angles that involve y. Here's an angle that involves y. Here's an angle that involves y. Are those angles, are those angles back to back making a line or across from each other? They're across from each other, so that means they are still vertical angles. And we still want them to be congruent. So we should still make them equal to each other. So we have a 7y minus 12, and we have a 6y plus 8. So I'm going to set them equal to each other. This one I'll solve. Get everything with y on the same side, so I'm going to subtract a 6y on both sides. So I have a 7y minus 6y is just 1y minus 12 equals 8. So we're going to add 12 to both sides. And we get y to be 20. Once again, we can plug back in up here and make sure that we get the uh, same thing. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 120 plus 8 is 128. And so this angle should match it. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140. Sometimes 20 is 140. Then we got 140 minus 12. That's going to be, oh, it's 128. So they end up being the same. Now, check this out. I got a 52 here. When I solve for x, plug it back in. I got 128 over here. When I plugged it back in and solved for y, guess what? 52, 128. I add those together. What do I get? It's going to be 180. So they ended up being supplementary, just like a linear pair. Those pair of angles that make a line should be. So. That is a problem that you should uh, try on your own. I'm going to be looking for you to have tried it on your own. So if you just have the answer written down, then I'm not giving you credit for having tried the problem. I will uh, tell you what you should get when you solve for x. These are, are these still right across from each other, or now do we have a, angles back to back that make a line? They're still across from each other, so they're still vertical angles. They should still be the same. Solve, you should get three. So double check that you can set up an equation, solve it, and get three when you work on this. But I want to move to the last problem here that we're going to do. Uh, this is going to be your stopping point for the notes. So once you hit this problem, this is where we're going to stop for this week. Uh, we'll finish and do that last group of problems. Uh, we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that next week. So just so you know, one of the variables. So remember, if you have two variables. You need to start by just worrying about one of the variables. So I'm just going to worry about x now. This one just has x in it. This one just has x in it. This one's got a y in it. I don't want that. So we're not going to worry about angle 3 right now. We're just going to worry about angle 1 and angle 2. Angle 1 is 4x plus 15. 
right here. And then angle two is x plus 40. So let's look at those two angles. We're not worried about angle three because it's got a y in it. We're just worried about x right now. These two angles, are they across from each other or are they put together making a line? They're put together making a line. So this is a, what do you call the pair of angles that make a line? There's a linear pair. And a linear pair, that means they're going to be supplementary. So the angles are going to add to 180. So when I take this, these two angles and add them together, I should get 180. That's what a linear pair is. They're a pair of angles that make a line, so that should add up to 180. So let's take our two angles and add them together. I've got an x plus 40 here, and then I've got a 4x plus 15 here. Add them together, I get 180. So let's solve that equation. I'm going to go through solving this one. On the left side, I'm going to combine everything together. So I've got an x here and a 4x here to be a 5x. Then over here, I've got a 40 here and a 15 here. That's going to be a 55. And then hopefully from there, we're pretty straightforward. We're going to get rid of the adding of 55 by subtracting. Then once we do that, this is uh, 125. Once we do that, we're going to divide by 5 on both sides to get rid of the multiplying. So then we should get 25 for x. So x ends up being 25. So let's plug back in and see what our angles turn out to be. x is 25, so I have x being 25 plus 40. 25 plus 40 is going to be 65 degrees. That's angle two. And then angle one, I've got four times x is 25 plus 15. Uh, four quarters is a dollar, so four times 25 is 100 plus 15 is 115 degrees. So I have. One of them is 65 and one of them is 115. But I want to know about angle 3. Uh, I'm actually not going to solve for y because it doesn't ask me to. Uh, you can, and you should get 5 for y if you set up an equation and solve it, just so you know. But what I'm interested in is the measure of angle 3. So now at this point, I should be able to figure out what angle 3 is. Because angle 3 is going to be the same as angle 1 or 2. It should be the same as the angle across from it, which is 2. So that means that the measure of angle 3, if angle 2 is 65 degrees, then angle 3 should also be 65 degrees. Again, you can set up the equation now that we have x being 25 and solve for y and plug it in. But since it just asks us for angle 3, now that we have angle 2, we should be able to know that angle 3 is the same. So I want to get through two of these. We're just going to focus on the setup and knowing how to do that. So give me a number from 1 to 10. 
Five. Let's do number five. First off, it asks you to classify the angles by their relationship. So you need to figure out uh, what kind of angles those are. Well, what does this box mean? Right angle, so uh, they're 90 degrees. So those angles add to 90. What do we call the angles that add to 90? It should be the one. 90 is the first one, so it should be the one, first letter of the alphabet. Complementary. So on your homework assignment, it should say classify the angles by their relationship. This is what we mean. Is tell me their complementary angles, because that'll tell you the equation. If they're complementary, then when I add them, I should get 90. So let's take the two angles here and here, add them together, get 90. There's your equation. One more, number from 1 to 10. Uh, three. First thing you look at, what kind of angles are they? They're right across from each other. So those are vertical angles. So if they're vertical angles, what should we say about them? Well, we should say that they are the same. They're congruent. They're going to be equal to each other. So I got a 2x plus 1 and an 87. They should be the same. And I know they're the same because they're vertical angles. Vertical angles have to be the same. This is why we're practicing vocabulary, because vocabulary is going to be important here as we go forward. So that's what you should do on all of these problems. And then the back is giving you some practice with the stuff we did last week. Some more problems.